Good morning. This is Mike Swagger again at the Kiln Doctor. This is the second of our series of tips, weekly tips. Uh, we are going to continue today talking about your kiln sitters. So this affects only the manual kiln uh, operators. And we're going to talk about your tube assemblies, the sensing rod, and your cone supports and cones. Uh, this happens to be uh, a kiln sitter that's considered kind of a standalone that's mounted on the side of the kiln. Um, you should have, or when you purchased your kiln, you should have had an operator's manual. Uh, it gives you all this information I'm talking about today. If you do not, uh, I'm sure you can find it on the internet, and or please contact me and we'll try to help you out. Uh, we're talking about tube assemblies. There are two types of tube assemblies. Uh, in this particular model that you see here, uh, this happens to be a bracket type tube assembly. It has a bracket here that mounts into the box or to the mounting plate. There's also called a torpedo tube, which mounts differently on a different plate. Uh, this actually goes into the plate like so. It mounts on a plate. It has a notch here, so you want to make sure you put that in the plate correctly. You can also tell by where your cone supports go into the tube. Uh, then you tighten down the uh, lockdown nut. Uh, last week we talked about double cones, using double cones in the kiln sitter. Uh, this was an example of a tube that needed to be replaced uh, because of all the corrosion, the rusting, um, and also the melting of the cone uh, supports, uh, the cones melting into that. Um, and at the same time, the sensing rod on this particular tube is bent. Uh, if you take the sensing rod out, if you can get it out, uh, you take the sensing rod out and you lay it on a flat surface. If you lay it on a flat surface, you can roll it and you can see where the bend is. Um, on a tube assembly that's not anywhere close to being corroded like this or rusted, and the mechanism where it attaches, the swivel assembly here, if this is nice and clean, uh, you can possibly just replace the sensing rod. I do that in many cases. I also inspect the tubes to make sure there's no uh, failing of the cement or the attachment. Um, if that's the case, then we need to replace the whole tube assembly. It comes complete. Uh, it will have the sensing rod, it will have the cone supports, and it will have your guide key for aligning it. Uh, you will need, if uh, your kiln has uh, the way it mounts onto the kiln, it may have a gasket, which helps keep the gases and corrosion from coming out of the chamber into your components. Uh, the gasket pushes up flush against the side of the kiln. It's held by a retainer clip uh, like so. So you would need these two additional pieces if your kiln has it. Uh, sometimes uh, this, this has been uh, replaced over the time of your ownership of the kiln and you may not have thought you needed to put this gasket on. If you have a lot of corrosion where this goes into the kiln then you should put a new gasket and a retainer clip to keep it in its place. Okay we have the cone supports. We have the sensing rod. It mounts to the box or to the face plate. Remove the tube, you're going to take off the two screws that hold the guide plate. You take your guide plate off. It's good to pay attention to how it's aligned so you know how to put it back onto the assembly. You also have two inner screws for this particular type of bracket. You have two holes here that mount up to these two screws. So we're going to take these two out, like so. 
Now, of course, when you do this to your kiln, you definitely want to make sure the power is off to the kiln and uh, you're safe when you do this. Okay, this is the rod assembly or the tube assembly that we took out. Uh, in this particular case, I replaced the rod, the sensing rod, because my tube looks good, my swivel looks clean and free, um, so we changed out the sensing rod, which is basically going to be a new rod like this. Okay, when you do that, make sure you have all your components are snug. This particular one happens to be an older model that actually needed a little flat screw to, uh, to loosen up the, the screw here that goes into the swivel that holds the sensing rod in place. When you put in the sensing rod, you want to make sure that you align this rod with the length of your uh, cone supports here. And once you do that, you just snug down the screw. Now, if you look at this, I did this intentionally to show you uh, it's a little bit short. So we're going to loosen this up and we're going to push this out so it comes in alignment with the cone supports. We snug the screw back as such. Okay, so now we're ready to put it back into our assembly. All right, make sure that you have it mounted correctly. Look at your tube. Uh, this would be upside down, so it's gonna go in like this. So we're gonna put this in. You don't have to worry about this being in place yet until you put the guide plate back on. So we're going to put this in this way. Um, you have to be kind of a contortionist to uh, hold everything and align everything. Okay, once you get it snugged down like that, you don't have to over tighten it. Okay, then we're going to take our guide plate. We're going to position it over the claw. And we're going to take the mounting screws. Okay, we're going to tighten these up just lightly and to check now for our calibrations you don't want to tighten this completely uh, because we have our guide key that's going to look like this uh, this is actually a tool that's used for checking your alignment uh, you put this in where your cone would go just like this and what that's doing is aligning our rod, sensing rod, uh, with the guide plate. So we want this to be centered. So if you notice on this guide plate here, it had a little oval cut where the screws are. So that allows you to move this left or right. You want to get this centered so it doesn't bind. Then we snug this down like this. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check our trigger. This is the weight, okay, and this is the actual trigger. You want this with the guide key in place. You lift this up. This plate should just clear the tip of that claw. If this happens to be too high, If this is too high like this, it's out of alignment. So you need to readjust this with your new sensing rod and cone supports to get this back to alignment. Okay, so it should just miss. Now, if you can see this, this is an example of how this alignment affects the cone. You have an underfiring, it looks kind of like a banana bend. Uh, your perfect bend is a 90 degree bend and over fire it's going to look more like a horseshoe bend. So if it has a horseshoe bend that would be where this claw and this plate is too high. Now what happens over time you should check this every 20 or 25 firings um, or also when you change your cones out look at your cones. If your cones are 90 degree bends, everything is still in alignment. If they're starting to change shape, they're over firing or under firing, you need to come back here and make an adjustment. So what we do is we take 
the trigger, the weight, and the claw, and we align this. Now, there's also a gap between here. There should be at least a sixteenth of an inch gap between the edge of this claw when this trigger is fully up in position. Okay, so if you do that <clears throat> with this tool, you should be good, pretty good to go. Everything should be in alignment. You should get a nice 90 degree bend on your cone. All right, one other tip. Um, lots of times, like I mentioned on this one, uh, the cone would actually stick to the cone supports or stick to the sensing rod. If you have kiln wash, I have a little bottle of kiln wash that I carry with me. You mix that up. It's the same kiln wash you use on your, on your uh, kiln shelves. Take a little bit, put it in a little cup or take a brush. We're going to take the cone supports out where the cone is going to rest. I'm just going to put a little light coating of kiln wash. And we're going to lay this out so it can dry. We're going to do that to each one of these, like so. And when you put these back in, the kiln wash is going to be on the upside. Take your finger, get a little touch of it, and put it on the underside of the sensing rod. So now when we put our cone in, when this sets on your cone supports and the sensing rod sits on the cone, it should not stick to your cone. You only have to do this once or twice with a new setup, a new rod, new cone supports. Uh, it will stick with new metal. Uh, once you've done that, you don't want to let it build up. But if you ever have a cone stick on you, just take it and check it, clean it a little bit, put a little bit of this back on it, kiln wash, and you should be good to go. Okay, uh, once we do this and everything's dry, Slip these back in place, like so. Okay, and there we go. If you got a little bit of a drip there, you just take that off. You don't want this to build up too much. And that should be ready to go when it dries. Now, another little tip I see quite often most people do not understand the proper way to put a cone in the kiln sitter. If you look at your cone, when you take it out of the box, you have three sides. <clears throat> if you look at this cone, it has an angle to it. It has a flat side, so if I were to turn this cone up, the angle is going to be up like this. And it also has a number stamp. You always want to check the number for the cone when you put it in your kiln sitter. So if you ever have multiple cones sitting on your kiln shelf and somebody accidentally dropped them and they mixed up a cone, unless you look at it, uh, you don't always know you have the right cone for that type of firing. If you're doing a bisque firing or if you're doing a glaze firing. Okay, so what I teach and if you follow the Orton uh, specifications, they show you this in the manuals uh, where placing this into your tube assembly, I put it between my two fingers and I always have the number stamp facing into the chamber. So basically you're going to lift your, you're going to lift your trigger you're going to hold down the sensing rod and you're going to lay your cone in on your cone supports. The number is facing the chamber. So that means the angle of this is going to be like this. And if you do this every time, you should have good firings. If you have any questions about any of this or you have any tips you'd like us to uh, to continue with. We're doing this each week. And uh, check us out on our Facebook and our website. Um, feel free to email us, call us, and I hope you have good firings.